This is a sight that you would not want to see with your airplane if you're the dispatcher or if you're the pilot. We can see that this airplane has unfortunately sunk into the pavement that it is sitting on. And especially when we're doing international operations, it's important to make sure that the airport and the airplane match up with each other, that our airplane is able to fly into that airport without having issues as far as pavement strength or pavement classification. And we're gonna look at that here. Our aircraft classification number and the pavement classification number, these have to work with each other. And in the Jefferson Airport directory information in this section, is going to be available to the dispatcher or to the pilot. For this airport example, we see that the pavement classification number is 65. We can see that right there. And also, we get some information about the type of pavement. It's a flexible pavement, and it is a high subgrade strength. This is right in this section here. And our tire pressure category is high, it doesn't have any limit on it. And then what we have to make sure as the dispatcher, especially in the planning stage, that our airplane will be able to be compatible with this. And here we can see on, the, on our table, we have a different aircraft type. So in this example, we're gonna look at the 767. And for the 767-200ER, we can see that for a high ACN for flexible pavement, and previously it said for that airport it was a high, we can look down this table and find the intersection and it tells us that the minimum aircraft classification number is 45. So our aircraft classification number is 45. In the previous slide, you saw that the airport was for high, it was 65. And in that case, this is airport and airplane will be fine together. So our ACN is good because it's below our maximum pavement classification number of 65 for this airport. Another thing to look at in this airport directory, we're still looking at Luxembourg, is the fuel requirements. You need to make sure that there is fuel actually available at this airport. And this one does tell us that we have Jet A1 available. Yeah, the dispatcher is still responsible to make sure that it's actually available to your flight, that fueling arrangements have been made. For international flights, it's not always as simple as just using a credit card and purchasing fuel or just billing the fuel. It, this has to be set up in advance often by the dispatcher or by flight planning services. And finally, we're going to take a look at firefighting and rescue capability. So not only are we looking at pavement strength and pavement classification number and whether airport, uh, whether fuel is available at the airport, we have to look at the airport's firefighting and rescue capability. And that we can also get from the airport directory section from Jefferson information. For this example, again, we've been looking at a 767. The minimum level required is IKO category seven. And this one in the airport directory, Luxembourg tells us that it is a fire classification of nine. So that is all right. The other thing to notice on here uh, for the 767, for doing a domestic type of operation, the FAA has categorized the 767 minimum firefighting capability as category D as in Delta. So there's actually a list that the FAA publishes to show all the different airports in the United States and you can look at this file and look at an airport and find out what the classification is. And so 767 requires a minimum of category Delta. So once we click that link to see the air, airport classification for airports, we can take a look and we actually have an Excel file that can be downloaded from the FAA. Once we open this Excel file that the FAA provides, we can see all the different airports classification lists, and we can see an airport rescue or aircraft rescue and firefighting index is given. So 
for an example, we have in Alabama, we have Mobile, Alabama is an index of Alpha. We have Birmingham, it's an index of Charlie. Um, we have Anchorage, that's an index of Echo. So with all these airports, we have to make sure that our airplane is okay. So Anchorage is Echo, our 767 required a category Delta minimum. So it would be okay for us to go into Anchorage. Now, just to point out, some of these airports, like I would guess Birmingham, it says it's a Charlie. It's likely that with some notice, Birmingham could probably make itself at a level Delta airport if our 767 did need to come in there. But right as it stands, it's right now Charlie. I've definitely called many airports before to ask what their classification is for their ARF index. And quite often, this file actually downplays them a little bit. So it's sometimes a phone call is really all that it needs to make sure that the airplane can legally go into that airport.